Let's just a quick recap. Before we get into the electron configurations, we had those four quantum numbers. They're describing the position of the electron. How many of those quantum numbers do we need to use um, to accurately or closely identify where electrons are located? How many of those do we need, Alex? All four of them, okay? We've got the principal, we've got the orbital, we've got the magnetic, and we have the spin, all right? All four of those get us as close to where we can be um, in terms of identifying where those electrons are located. So now we take that a step further, guys, and we need to talk about the configuration. Really what that is is it's just the arrangement of the electrons um, in their atoms and kind of how we represent those. It's got a, a, a code, so to say. Atoms of different elements will have different number of electrons, so each can have a different electron configuration. We will talk about ions and their configurations and how they differ, but we'll get there later on. We're going to use the atomic number to determine the number of electrons because we're dealing with neutral atoms, and that's the key here. So get your periodic tables out, your reference packets. You're going to need those, okay? So, for example, if I said sodium, how many electrons does sodium have? Eleven. How many does sulfur have? Sixteen. There you go. Those are, it's ironic that I put these up here, those two examples, because a lot of times people will just put S for sodium, even though it's Na, and they get those two mixed up. All right, but that's easy. We've done that. We did that in our last unit. But now we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to start arranging those. The whole idea, guys, of electron configuration is based on the off-ball principle. And what that does is it tells us electrons occupy the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. My analogy that I used in the past is if you guys had the choice to run a marathon or to stay in bed, what would you choose? Stay in bed, as you yawn back there, right? Absolutely. Most people would stay in bed. Why? Because we are we're lazy, all right? Myself included. I did not want to get out of bed this morning, especially when it's rainy and nasty out. Um, so we want to use the least amount of energy possible. Same thing with electrons, guys, and that's what the off-ball principle is saying. That it's going to fill the lowest ones that it can go into first before it goes up to higher energy ones. So if, if you think about it in terms of our last unit with the Balmer series and those bright line spectra, okay, when did we see those lines, those lights, the colors? We looked through the spectrum, but when did we see them? When did we actually see the color of the elements? What happens when they, the electrons come back down to a what? Ground state, which is the lower energy. We don't see them when they go up the higher. We see them when they come down to the low. They always want to be down in that low energy state. And that's going to be a common theme all throughout the year. When in doubt, think about, oh, what's going on with the energy of the atoms and the electrons? So when we begin to fill the orbitals, guys, we always start with 1s. Then we go to 2s, and, th and then we go to 2p, and 3s, and 3p. Because remember, the number out in front here, what does that tell you? That big number tells us what? Not the sublevel, but the energy level. Okay. So if we take a look, we'll bring up a note in that in just a second. Okay. We'll get. We'll come back to that. This picture right here. You don't have this in your notes, but this is what's going on. Okay. This is the order that we fill in the orbitals, and I'm going to give you guys another periodic table here in a minute that we're going to color. It's going to help you with that. And you see just how unique and how amazing the periodic table actually is, the way it's set up. But we start with the lowest energy, 1s. Okay, down here, then 2s, 2p. As we go up, we start to see it gets a little bit more complex the higher up we go. Okay, we'll talk about why that is in just a minute. This is another way to think about it. We have um, orbital, there are a few different notations. We'll talk about that, but this is just another visual picture showing kind of the relative energies of those different sublevels and their orbitals. Okay, so we see 1s is where we always start. It's always the lowest. 2, then it goes up a little higher, then it comes down. So we kind of zigzag back and forth like so to fill those up. We're going to talk about how we fill them up today. All right, so you need four different colors. Whether they're, if you guys have colored pencils or highlighters, you're going to need four different colors for what we're about to do. So when we look at this periodic table, guys, you can see it's got all the elements shown here, but this particular one is broken up into different blocks. What do you think these blocks represent based on what it's showing you right here? Okay, we're going to use it for the electron configuration, but think about it in terms of what we've talked about, guys, with those quantum numbers. What do we see right here? S, P, D, F. What are those called? Those are our sublevels, SPDIF, right? 
Folks, the periodic table is so unique. The way it's set up is that you can actually see the sublevels. What sublevels are being filled with those configurations? So over here to the left, we're going to have one color for these. All right. Doesn't matter what color you choose, but this is going to be my S block. So go ahead, color that in one color. That's going to be my S block. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can outline it, shade it. it doesn't have to be perfect. Then we're going to go through a different color for your P block. We're going to finish coloring those in four different colors. Point out, notice over here, guys, helium. Okay, I colored it the same as my S block because it's like we're going to slide this one over here to fill it in. Think about this. If I write out SPDIF, all right, so that's what I'm going to do, S-P-D-F. How many orbitals does the S sublevel contain? One. How about the P? Three. D? Five. F? Seven. Okay. How many electrons can the S sublevel hold? Two. P? Six. Ten. Fourteen. Take a look at your periodic table here, guys. This is the beauty of it. If you look at your S block, each block is, in diff is an electron, right? Because it goes right along with how many electrons each element has. We said look at the atomic number. Okay. Well, here's in this first row, what we're going to think about with our periodic table... Oh, oh, moved it. Was afraid of that. Forgot to have you guys do this. You guys can do this with your periodic table. We're going to label the periods right here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven for those periods. When we look at the periodic table, each period represents an energy level, the principal energy level, like that ring around the nucleus. So when we go to a different period, guys, we're on different rings of our atom. Now, again, we don't necessarily have defined rings like Bohr's model stated, but we think about it like that. Well, let's think about it. 1s, how many electrons can the S sublock sublevel hold? Two. One, two. Oh my goodness, look at that. No matter where we go, whether it's 2s or 3s, the S block, guys, only holds two electrons. That's why there's two elements next to each other because it's those two electrons. Every two blocks is one, or two blocks, yeah, that's what I said it, is one orbital. The S only has one orbital. Okay? Take a look now. Let's look at P. How many electrons can the P sublevel contain? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness. They follow the same idea that those sublevels hold. D can hold 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my goodness, 10. And then if you look at F down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you count all the way, it's 14. Okay? So it's set up to show what's happening with those electrons in their sublevels. Okay? Now, is it separated into all these boxes? No, if you look at your periodic table. But the more we look at this, the more we're going to be able to identify with a regular periodic table. Hey, this is where my S block is, it's the first two groups. Um, my P block are the last six groups, groups 13 through 18. My D block is the ones in the middle, those transition metals. All right? And then the F are down below. And that's why the F block is down below, so that it fits and makes it look much neater the way it is. Okay? It fits right along with that. So keep this in mind as we're going through this whole idea of electron configurations. It's going to be in order. How we fill in... Is we always start up here in the left, we go from left to right. It's like a typewriter. You guys know what a typewriter is? Have you ever used a typewriter? A non-electric one? What do you have to do when you get to the end of the line? You gotta push it back, okay? Same idea here. When we get to the end of the line, we go here, then we go back to the beginning of the next row. Alright? And so this is the order that we're gonna fill in. We're gonna go here, then we're gonna go all the way across and fill in there. Then we're gonna go to 3S, 3P. 4s. Now notice what it says here when we get down to the D block. What's this number that's right next to where the D starts? Three. Three. Folks, this is what we call orbital overlap. We'll talk more about it here in just a second. But it's still going to be the same order, the same pattern. We're going to go just like this. But then we get down here. Notice there's a star, right? We have to take a little detour and go down to the F block now. 
Then we go back up here and continue along. Here, down to here, and back. So this is the order that we're going to fill in. So yeah, you know, back in the day when I learned it, I learned what's the order. The order was with the off ball principle. Going back to this um, picture right here. I learned how to write out 1s, 2s, 2p, and then do arrows with it. It looks, uh, it's a whole lot easier when you just look at the periodic table. And we're going to make more sense as we go along here in just a second. Okay, so you don't have to necessarily draw all the arrows in. If you want to, I would encourage you guys to do so, like I have right here. Um, we're going to talk about it here in just a second once we start with the electrons. The the question was, what about this block up here where helium is? Remember, we slid that over here as part of the S block. If you look at your periodic table, you only have hydrogen right here. But as, in terms of electron configurations, we're going to bring helium and be a part of the S block. Because in that first energy level, you can only have two electrons. You have just the one S. Think back to your boarding house example. On that first floor, you only had the sunny room, right? You had one bunk, two people were in there. With the first energy level, you have one block, one sublevel. It's the S sublevel and can hold two electrons, one orbital. Then you go on to the next one, and that's when you continue on like we've shown here. Are we good with the arrows? Can I go on to the next slide? Okay. So when we go to fill orbitals, let's take a few notes, and then we'll get into some practice. And I guarantee you it's going to click for each one of you at a different time, but it's going to click for each one of you at some point. And you're like, oh, wow, this is actually really, really easy. Always begin at the lowest. Where's the lowest going to be? What's the lowest orbital, guys, that we can fill? S. S, but specifically what S? 1S. 1S, okay? So here's what an electron configuration tells us. All right? Make sure you write these in there, back on page three in your notes. Folks, this number out in front, this is our principal energy level. This is quantum number one. There's our lowercase n. It's telling us the energy level. So that big number out in front is always going to tell us what energy level we're on. The letter, what do you think that's going to tell us? Yeah, that's my sublevel. Remember, spdiff. And within that, remember, 1, 3, 5, 7, how many orbitals it can contain, because that lets you know how many electrons. And this exponent, this is the number of electrons that we have in that orbital in that orbital. So our first example, hydrogen. How many electrons does hydrogen have? It's the first thing you've got to identify is how many electrons. We have one electron. Okay, I'm going to go back to this slide right here. So now I'm going to count out my boxes based on how many electrons. Well, first one's easy. I'm going to be right here. Boom. So now let's take a look. That's where my dot is. That's how many electrons I have. We're going to count all the boxes and keep track of those. This is going back to that code that you guys started to look at yesterday with that packet. Right? You know what I'm talking about? The manager's code in the boarding house? Yes? Okay. Um, so what energy level am I in? That's the first place you start. What energy level? What period am I in? One. Remember, energy level is going to be a number, so I'm in one. What sub-level am I in? This is the block. S. S. And how many electrons do I have in that one S? So I have one. There's my electron configuration for hydrogen, guys. One S1. Let's move on to helium. How many electrons does helium have total? Two electrons. So going back to my map, there's one. And two, I'm going to start filling the boxes with the number of electrons that I have. So let's go ahead and write down the code for what I have. What energy level am I in? Am I starting in? One. And then how many do I have in the one S? Two. Maybe it's starting to click for you. Maybe not yet. Keep going with it. Lithium. How many electrons do we have for lithium? Three electrons. So go back to our map here. One. Two. Now I run out at this point. So where do I have to go next? Well, follow my arrows. It goes here at the end of the 1s, then I drop back down to my next one. So I'm going to put another dot right here. Now we're going to go ahead and start at the beginning when we count our code. So we started at the what energy level? Did we start there? 
Always go back to the beginning. Where's the beginning? One. What let what block? S. How many do we have in the one S? Sorry, let me go back. Two. Two. Now does that count all my electrons that I have? And then two S block. And then we're gonna go to second energy level. We're in the S block and we have one electron. If you take a look here, guys, you have your total electrons. If you count up all your exponents, it should add up to the total number of electrons that an element has. So here we've got two. That makes sense. Two plus one is three. We have a total of three electrons. Now we're going to jump ahead a little bit. Let's go to sulfur. How many electrons does sulfur have total? We've got 16 electrons. So I'm going to go back to my map. I'm going to count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Early on here, I'm going through, guys. I'm putting dots on all mine. Okay, you don't have to do this. I'm doing it now as a visual. So we have to we have to um, account for all of these electrons up until this box right here. But where do we begin? We always where? Go back to the beginning at 1s. So we're going to have. I'm going to write mine up here because I'm going to run out of room. 1s. How many did we have in the 1s? Two. Then we go to the 2s, and how many do we have in 2s? 2s2. Now, where do we go after 2s? Follow your arrow. Oh, it's 2p. We're still in that second energy level, and it's p. How many do we have in the p block? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that possible? Yes, it is, because p can hold up to 6 electrons, we've said. Then where do we go after 2p? 3s, and how many do we have there? Then we go 3P, and how many do we have in the 3P? Four. That's the big idea there, guys, because we can only count up to how many we had. One, two, three, four. Then we ran out of electrons. It's the same order every time. Okay? Is it starting to make a little bit of sense? Have you guys ever seen this before? Oh, something brand new. Awesome. I want you guys to try nitrogen, silicon, and Phosphorus. I'll give you a couple minutes. Garrett, first off, how many electrons does nitrogen have? Seven. Se seven electrons. Let me, what's going on? All right. What in the world is going on? There we go. Seven electrons. So, go for it. One S squared, two S squared, two P. Now, remember, you guys have a built-in check as well. Your exponents, when you add them all up, two plus two plus three should add up to the total number of electrons. Absolutely correct. Silicon, Tony. How many electrons total? Yes, 14. 14 electrons total. All right, so 1s squared, 2s squared, 2p to the 6th, uh, 3s squared, and 3p to the 2nd. There we go. And what about phosphorus? Somebody I haven't heard from Grant. How many electrons total? So this one should look very similar to silicon. Go ahead. Oops, 3p to the third. Now, you just saw me make a quick little mistake, guys. That's the one thing that can happen with this. Make sure that you are writing them correctly and take your time with it. Okay, good. That's our order. If it still doesn't click for you guys, you're just like, I'm not 100% sure, we're going to get more practice. All right? Now we're going to talk about something called orbital overlap. Okay? <clears throat> so we're going to start off with bromine. Let's do this together. How many electrons does bromine have? 35. 35. Oh, boy. There's going to be a lot of writing going on. So if I go back, guys, and take a look here, all right, we count it out. If you look, bromine is right here on our periodic table, okay? It's right there. So if you find helium over here and we go down, it's right there. So we're going to have to start way back at the beginning. When we start doing that, okay, we've got, if we look, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, but then what happens right here? This is what we were just talking about. Your d block is going to be behind in terms of that number, that coefficient number out in front. It's going to be one behind whatever your s is. And here's the reason why. 
Again, we said before, guys, it's all about being in the lower energy. When you get into that transition, this is why they're called transition metals in there, is you get some different chemistry taking place. And it all goes back to being in that lowest energy state. So right here, as we go up, okay, 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S is actually lower in energy than 3D. Well, if you think about it, 4, energy level 4 is higher than energy level 3. Why do you think, though, that the S might have less energy than the D? Any ideas? Alex? There's less electrons, absolutely. Even though you're higher up in an energy level, you have only two electrons versus how many does D hold? Ten. It has five orbitals, it's going to hold up to ten electrons. What do we know about like charges, guys? Like charges will do what? What do you mean cancel out? Yeah. Think about if you have, you guys played with magnets, right? When you take the same poles and you put them together, do they go together? No, because they're both the same. Guys, like charges will repel each other. Opposites will attract, okay? So since you have all these negative charges, you've got 10 of those right here, there's actually more energy in the D than there is in that S, even though they're up in extra energy zone. So the big thing you've got to remember is that when you get down to that D block, whatever line you're in, if you're in period 4, because again, eventually we're going to move away from the separated one like we're looking at right here, <clears throat> Excuse me. Whatever S, whatever period level you're in, the D block is going to be one behind that number. So let's go ahead and write out bromine. Where do we always start? We start at 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. If we go back and take a look, it'd be 3s2, 3p6. So if you take a look, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So we're at 18. We've got to get another 17 in there. Where do we go after 3P6? 4S, 2, 4S, 2. Then where do we go? 3D. Yeah, it's that orbital overlap, guys. It goes back to 3D. And how many will we have in there? 10. And then we go back to 4P. And it's going to be five. So guys, notice, last thing I want to point out today, your S's and P's, they will always have the same energy level. D will be one behind. And we're going to find out that F is actually going to be two behind. What I want you guys to do for homework is to try these three that are in your notes. Cobalt, platinum, and lead. I want you guys to try your best with those. All right, for tomorrow.